で先にコンって言ったら、えー、ラミタディはトーソンを入れて「違うわ」って言った「トーマンでさ」って言ってたここでおっおお先に入たとチューブホーチュレタトンチョーチュュレタトンチョーチュレタトンチョーチュレタトンチョーチュレタトンチョーチュレタトンチョーチュレタトンチそれで家のサムチェイブはズバイを借りる。ズバイを見るとトラードを借りる。サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。ただトップさんもいな。サイダンジャッチャーで。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。で、サムチェイブはトラードを借りる。ベルキボンのセタリナ、ラマギマサンティー、チッチャーチェーブコララマンのマンドウンサンディ、ロジシュのグトーチッチャーダーブコディ、カレツグトー、ジョブトリティータブヨレッジ。パンソンイタブヨレッジ、ディズビートンホン、ディタワコナティータブヨレッジ、ヤコチル、フリティキテ、ダンディビトン、ハコロー、ドギサキ、ダンディビトンティハコロー、タダンディズカジキコト。たてるけばたぶんラムラティに、たぶんすっとんぐりをてたおこのでよこのえち。So nowadays, many disciples are joining the Yamantaka Drupchen. And so, if you have joined the Drupchen, you might remember the opening prayers that we do every day when we take refuge and cultivate bodhicitta in the beginning of the sadhana. And so in the section of the motivation of bodhicitta, the mind generation, it says that out of the cause of ignorance arises the condition that is a wrong view, the condition of a wrong view. Um, A wrong view, a misconception. And so that ignorance here, the cause of ignorance is that we do not understand, we do not know that there is no self. We think that there is an I, that it's me. And so from that, then it says so this, out of this cause of ignorance, the condition of a misconception arises. And then from that, The aggregate of suffering, which is the body, arises. So, first there is ignorance, and then there is attachment, and that fixation, this clinging fixation, this attachment is what creates the body, this aggregate of the body. And once we have created a body, naturally we will be attached to the Sensation of bliss, of pleasure, and we will naturally not want to feel any pain. And um, so this is the aggregate. And, um, and then in the text, it continues that mind generation, the Yamantaka. And in this way, <coughs> sentient beings are helplessly drowning in the ocean of suffering, the ocean of samsara. Um, for example, even though you live in a country, a very powerful, free country like America, for example, sometimes things happen where there's nothing you can do about, like a natural catastrophe, like fire or water and so on. And then beings are helpless, and many thousands of people lose their lives. And often, then, the country cannot do anything to. Save their own people, leave alone the entire world, other countries. So that is this helpless sinking in the ocean of suffering. So we need to seek protection from that. And so it is said that someone who themselves has not become liberated from the ocean of samsara can also not protect others. So that is what we learn in the context of refuge. And that is why we take refuge in the three jewels, because only the three jewels have an ability to grant protection, and no one else has that ability. If you think about it, you will really find that this is true. And so then, how do the three jewels grant protection? So that 
again comes back to the causes, what causes protection. What the three jewels tell us is that let go of self-grasping and the afflictive emotions. Cultivate an altruistic mind. The altruistic mind is what will protect you. And so then how will the altruistic mind protect one? When you take refuge in the three jewels, and now you must sustain love and compassion. You must increase love and compassion. That is the Dharma. That is what it means to take refuge in the Dharma. So you must not allow to, to lose your love, your compassion. Uh, you must not allow an obstacle, a hindrance, a condition, overpower it. So now you have love, but your love is very limited. And it is easily lost when you encounter a certain condition. So in order for you not to lose the love that you have, you take a vow. Like a samaya. That is why we take a vow. Like the Bodhisattva vow. And once you... took a vow, you think that even at the cost of my life, I will not force sake love. This love is my only true friend, and I will hold on to it by any means. And if you hold on to it, then even if you are not asking for it, even if you say, I don't want to be born in the higher realms, you will be born in the higher realms, naturally. That's the quality. of love because if you have love you will naturally because you have created the root cause for it so that is why the Buddha speaks of the cause of happiness or may beings have that cause of happiness and that is only love so he said that only sustain love and compassion. And when someone harms you, do not let go of it. Do not lose your love. Ordinary people have love, but they lose their love when others harm them. When you get angry, you lose your love. So your commitment should be so strong that you think that even if someone were to cut off my head, I will not get angry at them. So think like that, because your body is just like an old car. You will have to leave it be behind. Um, so what you will not leave behind is your mind. And therefore, it is crucial that you do not lose the love that you have, that you do not spoil it. And in order for you to not lose the love that you have,
time, time, he never, never had to do anything. There were actually several lamas who never had to do anything that whole time, just miraculously, really, for no actual reason. And that just naturally happened. They're naturally protected because of the cause that they bring with them. So again, first, we need to develop trust in karma. And if you trust in karma, you will understand the fault of self-grasping. And once you understand the fault of self-grasping, you will then try to find a way to get rid of self-grasping. And then many, um, many different methods to do so will unfold. <laughs> So, so what need to be abandoned are the, our deflective emotions, especially anger and jealousy. And what needs to be adopted or practiced 
is love and compassion. So it's very important that you remember the faults of these afflictions, especially anger and jealousy, over and over again. There's one example, one story from Tibet that illustrates the um, destructiveness of anger that might be beneficial to hear. So there was this story about um, uh, a group of people, a group of Tibetans who were renting a car to go on a pilgrimage all over the place in Tibet in the Lhasa area. And so they had um, a driver that they hired and then there was this group of people and among them there was a nun and she had a, a lot of compassion. So the car was going all over the place and tell him to go here and there and be really um, rude to him, really offensive. And so they just um, actually, were, whenever they could, they would just be really insultive and hurtful towards that driver. And so eventually the driver got really upset and angry. And then the nun felt compassion for him and, and, and helped him. And so she was on his side and she helped him. And so one day they, they came to this big lake. And so then they got out of the car and when it was time to leave again, then the, the nun was somehow left behind. And so the driver was in the car and all the other passengers were in the car. And it seemed as though the none was intentionally left behind, so they just like, didn't let her in the car and just took off without her. Um, but then what actually happened is the, the driver drove that car in, into the lake, um, committing suicide and taking those other passengers with him. Um, so such is the power of, of hatred, of, of anger. And that none remains unharmed. And that is because of these causes and conditions she did have that cause of being there, the cause of being there at the time when everyone was meant to die together. That's the karma that they shared. But then the condition was her compassion. And due to that condition, she was spared the suffering. And so this is how the karma then changed in her case. So then the driver knew of her kindness and he didn't want to take her with him. So he killed himself and everybody else, but not the nun.
Um, so There is this prayer where it says, may the three poisons